I can put this on the YouTube. So you got it going? Yep. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet everyone today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, such a lovely name I was thinking about this morning. It says, All the family in heaven and earth is named that name. There's not another name and any greater than the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And to come down to this day where the, we have taken the name, we have taken it in baptism because Brother Ram said you have to take his name. And then now we come all the way through the church ages and so on and because he couldn't marry a bride in the first age because she was not complete. She was just getting started. So come all the way through and then have a body build up, the head come down, and the two become one husband and wife, and, and our name is Mrs. Jesus Christ. So that is really our name. So we have taken it, and it's a revelation that it's to the individual themselves. It's not a group revelation. It is a personal revelation. So we want to I just invite the Lord in. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you again for this great day, Lord. The Bible says it's a great day, and I believe it, Lord. So we're living in it. We're here, and we believe that that you're in us, and you're leading us, and you're guiding us, just as you said you would. And you said you would show us all truth if we'd walk in the light, that, Lord, you'd, you would show it. And as we would walk, it would more unfold and reveal itself. So, Lord, this morning we're, we're stepping out again. We're walking in that light. So, Lord, we pray that you'll continue to shine it. Let us walk to one day we walk all the way out of here, back into where we come from. Amen. So, we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, this morning... <clears throat> I want to take a little subject, and I had uh, preached this about almost two years ago, but I went back and I, I, I changed and took away and I added some different quotes, which I've seen since then, but I want to take this and give it a title, The Thunders Sounded From the Earth. The Thunders Sounded From the Earth, and you'll see why we're saying this in a little bit. We want to read uh, out of Revelations 10, chapter 10, and then I want to get into some, some quotes from uh, Brother Bannon to back up uh, what we're saying. So, if you want to take your Bibles and read along, let's go to Revelations uh, 10 and 1. And we're going to read the first four verses, then we're going to drop down to Revelations 10, 7. So let's read Revelations 10 and 1. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven, saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Revelations 10, 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he's declared to his servants, the prophets. So may the Lord bless the word. And so we see here, this is where we're getting our text from here, that there was seven thunders had uttered their voices, and John said he heard them. Well, he heard them right there. And so he heard them so much that he was about 
to write them down. But there was a voice. The voice came from heaven. And it said, seal up those things. And that's exactly what John did. He sealed them up in seven seals. He sealed them up just the way God told him. He sealed them up in, in symbols and Bible terminology and so on that it wouldn't totally be totally revealed until the last days. And it couldn't be revealed because Revelation 10, 7 had already been written and there was somebody coming to fulfill that. Now, and um, that's why I'll put this down here for a reference in uh, Revelations chapter 1 and verse 20. It said, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So we got seven angels, we got seven churches. And that's what is going to be going through as uh, history as they work through uh, the church ages. I just listened to the church ages this, this past week and uh, the ones that Brother Ryan preached there in 1960. And uh, it was just really good to, because some of these things you miss. And I want to say this, the things that we're reading, they, these things didn't happen yesterday. These things, especially the message here that Brother Brown brought, it's almost 60 years old. And the people read it like, well, this is brand, it might be brand new to them, but I've been reading these quotes for about 40 years. So, and every time that I go back and read them, I see something because this is, light is shown over here well, when it shows here, it reflects over here and just more opens up to us. And that's, that's the way it should be. So these things, we should be moving along the road. We shouldn't be here like little babies. Well, you know, how about this and how about that? And some brother was asking, he said, well, people are worrying about should a woman wear pajamas or something? Mm -hmm. Well, I ain't worried about what she's doing in her bedroom. That's not up to me. So I want to get the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what, that's what I'm after. But now to back up what we're saying that the thunders sounded from the earth, I want to look into the message. Is this the sign of the end, sir, there in Jeffersonville? And this is 1962 right there in the last part of December. And look at, he makes this statement. Now, remember... He's telling, this whole message is about, he's telling about the vision he had, that tremendous vision of, of seeing the angels. And he said, look where the voices was. The thunders, not in heaven, on earth. So the voices wasn't in heaven. He said they were on earth. The thunders never uttered from the heavens, they uttered from the earth. Well, if they uttered from the earth, the earth is not uttering them. What is the earth? It's me and you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's men, because that's how he chose to get his word out. Brother Brown said it many, many times, and you can see it all through the scripture. Oh, yeah. So, he said, they uttered from the earth, and I was about to write when I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal, and he makes an emphasis here, capital S-E-A-L. So seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And John was true. That's exactly, uh, he was a good apostle. He'd done just what God said to do. And we got to think about it. John was on the Isle of Patmos, but <clears> the <throat> other day when I was listening to the to the church ages, Brother Brown, he made an emphasis. He said John was transmitted. Amen. 
over into the Lord's day. So the thing John's talking about is over here in the Lord's day. He's back over here in his body. He's over there on the Isle of Patmos in A.D. 95 or whatever. But in his spirit, by way of these visions, he's been transported all the way over here into the Lord's day. So he's seeing the things that we're going to live through. And so that, to me, that is really yeah. tremendous when you can see what has really happened. Now, I want to get a quote here out of the first seal. And this, to me, is, has to be the foundation of the seals. And Brother Ram starts off here in the first seal. And he said, now, the Lamb is standing tonight as we enter into this sixth chapter and he's got the book in his hand and he's starting to reveal it and he said oh i would have absolutely today and i hope the, that the people are spiritual well i hope we're spiritual as well and i would have had a, a horrible mistake if it hadn't have been about 12 o'clock today when the Holy Spirit came into the room and corrected me. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, this is important because He could stand correction. <clears throat> and that's the trouble with a lot of people today. They cannot stand correction. Brother Brown said the word corrects the error. And that's what we've had this day. He said, so... It come in, this Holy Spirit came in and corrected me on something that I was writing down to say. And I was taking it from an old context. Look here, the old context won't work. Mm -hmm. Brother Brown said, all that stuff, you need to burn it. Don't bring it over here. Yeah. And that's what he was fixing to do because why? This was something, he didn't know what these seals were, so he would be like me or you. Well, we'll go back and see what we said before, but what we said before won't work now. And he said, I was taking it from a, an old context. He said, I had nothing on it, and I don't know what the, the, what this, the second seal is, no more than nothing. He said, I, I had some old context of something I had spoke on several years ago and wrote it down and gathered the context and Dr. Smith and many great outstanding teachers. So, Brother Branham done just like we would do. Mm -hmm. If you come into something, well, you're, you, you're, you know so much, but why wouldn't you go back to somebody before you and gather <laughs> what they know and try to bring it on, <clears throat> bring it on forward? Well, that's what he done. He said he, he read after the, the great men like Dr. Smith and Dr. Locker and all these guys. But what did these tell us? The word don't come to a theologian. It don't come that way. God never intended to. So now he's being honest. Absolutely honest. Some people wouldn't, they wouldn't even hardly tell you they read after Brother Brown. I mean, no, they're saying what he said. Amen. They act like, well, you know, I got this. You didn't get it. We know where you got it from. But he says now, so he got it from these great teachers, and he said, <clears throat> I gathered them and believed that I wrote it down and I was fixing to say, well, now I'll study from that standpoint. And then about 12 o'clock in the day, the Holy Spirit just swept right down in the room and the whole thing just opened up to me. And there it was, the first seal being opened. So who opened the, the seal? The Holy Spirit Amen. opened it. But how did he open it? He opened it through his messenger. Mm -hmm. And so when I read that, I said, well, you know, as Paul said, when Paul was called, he said, I didn't get this from man. He said, I went off into Arabia for three years with the scrolls. And he said, I didn't get it from man. He said, I got it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Correct. Well, that's God's pattern, and he's not going to change it. Yeah. So here we say, Brother Brown is saying the same thing. I didn't get it from Dr. Smith or Dr. Locker or some other teacher. Mm -hmm. I got it from the Holy Spirit. And look here, we're resting on that because that's the way God uses. Now, we're talking about the, how the thunder sounded from the earth. 
and this uh, and this first seal, Brother Ram, he lays out what's going to happen in the church ages. And once once God lays a pattern, well, he don't he don't change it. Mm -hmm. Whatever he does to start with, it follows all the way through. Now let's see what he said here. First seal, Jeffersonville. He said, now notice, but it's to be revealed when the Lamb leaves his intercessory post from the Father. Now that's Revelation 5. Well, we know what Revelation 5. He said, nobody could open the book, nobody could look on the book, but he said, don't weep, John. He said, the Lamb of the tribe of Judah. And he looks around and here comes a Lamb. So he's moving He's moving from what? The intercessory over here to reveal because the question was who, who is able to loose the seven seals? Mm -hmm. It's right there in Revelation chapter 9. And that's what he points us back to. Now he takes a book of seals. The book of seals or the book sealed with seals breaks them and shows him, look, at the end of the age. What age? The church age. Now, after the intercessory is over, the church ages are done, finished up. He come in the first age, the Ephesian age, revealed, sent the messenger. And now, he said, notice what happened as we go along. And he's going to reveal the whole plan. He said, here's the plan of it. The first thing happens is an announcement in heaven. And he said, what happened? A seal is opened. What is that? Do you like how he's he's always asking questions? Mm -hmm. Questions that you might ask, mm -hmm. but thank God he comes when he asks the question, he answers Amen. it. So I don't have to worry about what the answer is. Amen. And he says, now what is that? He said, a mystery is unfolded. And when a mystery unfolds, then a trumpet sounds. It declares a war or a plague falls and a church age is open. What is the war part? The angel of the church catches the mystery of God not fully yet revealed, but when he does, he catches this mystery of God and goes forth to the people after the mystery has been given to him, he goes to the people, and what does it do out there? He begins to pro proclaim that message, and what does it start? A war, a spiritual war, and we are in a spiritual war because that's the pattern right there. And then he says, every age happens the same way. So whatever happened here, comes all the way through, but now listen. He said, oh, it's a great plan until it comes to the last angel. Now, he has no certain mystery, but he gathers up all that's been lost in them other ages, all the truths that wasn't truly revealed yet, and as the revelations come, then he reveals those things in his day. Now, if you want to read it, there it is about Revelations 10, 1 to 4. And you'll get it, see? He takes the book of the seals, breaks them, and shows the seventh angel for this alone, the mysteries of God is the ministry of the seventh angel. So there's nobody else Amen. coming. Amen. And the people Amen. could only get that through their mind that nobody else is coming. I don't care if we're here another hundred years, nobody else is coming. This is the last message, the last angel. Now, and he says, the seventh angel, now we come through the church. You had to come through the church ages to get here because these were the mysteries in the church ages. And with history and prove it, the, the angel's message or the seven church, all right, he reveals all the mysteries that's been in the past. The past what? The past seven church ages. Even with history and prove it, it's the angel's message of the seven church. 
All right. Reveals all the mysteries that's been in the past. All the things in the past. Revelations 10, 1, 2, 7. And I can show you. I don't have any places. He said Revelations 10, 1 to 7 has been fulfilled. So we're not waiting for any of these things fulfilled. We're just waiting for the people to see it. Hopefully they got eyes that they can see it and catch it with. And that's the main thing. And that's why that, that we're saying what we're saying. Because if it's been revealed, somebody has, has to, uh, to give it out. And God, man, he chose man to do that. Even in Revelations 10, 8 through 11, look at here, the book that was opened in the angel's hand over in Revelations 10, 1. John was our type. He was over here in the church in the Lord's day. And he said, you've got to eat that book. Mm -hmm. He said, and once you eat it, he said, it's going to be sweet in your mouth and bitter in your belly. And I want you to talk to the whole world over again. Kindred, none, tongues, and nations, and everybody. And so that's what we are commanded to do even in our day. So all these mysteries have been holding down unto this day here. Now, this is in the breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals. He said, the seven seal book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelations 10. Did you hear what he said? Amen. The seven seal book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelations 10. If you're marking it down, let's turn to Revelations 10 just a moment, and you'll get an understanding before we get into it. Now, this is at the end time for listen. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. If you notice, that's Christ. Amen. He's telling us the mighty angels of Revelations 10, 1 is Christ. And he is the one that comes. If you notice, see, because he in the Old Testament was called the angel of the covenant. And this is what really kind of um, catches people because, well, he said, he's coming, he's coming to us. Well, let's see what he said. He's an angel of the coming, and he's directly coming to the Jews. Directly means without delay. Now, for the church is finished. Well, how did the church get finished? In Revelations 5, he took the book. Everybody that was in the book, if your name was on that book before the foundation, he took the book, he got you. You said, well, I wasn't even, but what's that got to do with it? Yeah, right. Was you on the book before the foundation of the world, or your name just get wrote today or yesterday or something? That's what people, they're, they can't with a car on mind, they can't comprehend spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Because when you tell somebody that you was with God before the fountain, they say, well, I mean, you're weird. <laughs> but it don't matter. That's what the Bible says. That's what Brother Brown said. And he didn't just say it. He took us back to the Scripture mm -hmm. to prove that. So that's what we're saying today. He said, the church is finished. Well, he got the church when he got the book because that's what <laughs> the book was all about. He said it was, what? The book of redemption. And he goes on, he said, And his, it was as the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. You remember in the angel in Revelations 1, same thing, angel is a messenger, and he's a messenger to Israel. See, the church has been raptured. Yeah. The church has been raptured? Look here, he's not talking about the denominational rapture. What is a rapture? You go into Christ. You become one with Christ. You're where He's at. He said in John 14, I'm going to prepare a place Amen. where I am. There you may be also. Amen. So we're with Christ. Wherever He's at, we're at because we're part of Christ. And He said, Though the church has been raptured, see, or been fixing to be raptured, He comes for His church. 
And I, I know that a lot of people have to read over that real quick because why? Well, it don't fit with this old, uh, what we'll call a church age, old text, old context. It don't fit with that because everybody, I don't care how, where they come from, the Methodists wanted to bring a little Methodist over. The Baptists wanted to bring a little Baptist over. The Pentecostals wanted to bring a little. And he said, that's, that's the shuck. That Pentecost is the shuck. It's dead. It's dry. It's dried up. Don't mess with that. He said, we're over here in a complete brand new age. Now, the thunder sounded from the earth. Now, this is Christ, the mystery of God revealed. He said, now the coming of the Lord is in mystery. We don't know when he's coming. We don't know how he's coming, but we know he's coming. See? And so was all the mysteries of God waiting for this last day. After he's already been completed, then he reveals and shows what he's done. Now what did he say? After he's already been completed. So it has to be completed. Then he reveals and shows what he's done. And that's why he said in the rapture message, the rapture is a revelation. After it's already been completed, he shows. How does he show? He shows to the, to the individual by revelation. He said, oh, he never gave his mystery in full. He said it's just like comparing the seven seals. Now when God used Martin Luther for the coming out of that, that church or that church age and he used John Wesley, he gradually brought them out and revealing in them that church age. And then when it goes back through the Bible now, we find out, but in the last days, the reason it was such a tremendous thing that he spoke of it here and showed those seven thunders. How did he show them? Right here. That picture in Life Magazine. And that's what he said. He said he showed those seven thunders and looked in Life Magazine. Well, that's where he said, well, so that's a picture of the seven thunders. Mm -hmm. Well, what is a thunder? It's a voice of God. Who brings the voice of God? The messenger. There were seven voices down through seven church ages. And what, what is the voice of God? It's the word of God. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. His voice is his word. And he said, a stranger, they're not going to follow. So, now let's go over to God hiding himself in simplicity and revealing himself the same there in Jeffersonville. He said, now, we're teaching, and can you realize what a great strain it is on me? Because if I teach something wrong, I'm going to have to answer for it. And so does everyone else too. See? And so I must not take what anyone says. Amen, Brother Brown. We're not taking what anyone says either. We're staying with the voice. We're staying with the message. He said, I must be inspired. And I believe the seven angels who hold these seven thunders will granted. So he's telling us that the seven angels will give us the seven thunders. And we know that those angels were the messengers of the church ages and they had to come forth because they couldn't finish it up in their age. They had to wait to come down here to give it to the seventh <clears throat> angel. That's what he's already told us. Now, let's go in this seventh seal. And some people, I was talking about the other day, when they read the seventh seal, they think like, well, it just happened yesterday. This seventh seal was 1963. That's almost 60 years ago. And they act like it just happened yesterday, and this is something brand new. Well, it might be brand new then, but it's not brand new. We've had this. We've had time to hear it. We've had time to hear it over and over. We've had time to read it. We've had time to dissect it. We've had time to do all these things. And we should have some kind of understanding what he's talking about. But it seems like the people, they'll go back. And if he makes some, quote, con contrary to what they think, well, they just kind of mark it off. Well, you know, 
But we can't do that. He said that man lives by every word. And if he speaks, there's a reason for it. So let's see what he said in the seventh seal. He said, have you noticed the mysterious parts of this week? That's what it is. That's what it's been. It's been not a human being, a man. It's been the angels of the Lord. So he's not putting it on himself. He said, it wasn't me, a man. It's been the angels of the Lord. They're the one that comes with the message to give me, for me to give you, because that's my position. <clears throat> then he goes on in the seventh seal. He said, have you noticed the mysterious parts of the thing this week? He said, that's what it is. That's what it's been. It's been not a human being. It's been a... It, a human being, a man, it's been the angels of the Lord. And Brother Ram, he goes on to talk about the trip out to Mexico and while they was out there on that hunting trip and he said he had to prepare himself for the visitation of these angels, these seven angels. And he said, and these seven angels, he said, I felt beside myself And I was in the west, and the angels was coming east. And as they come by, I was picked up with them. And he said, you remember that coming east. And some people, they read this, they say, how was Brother Brown? I don't know how he was picked up. But the vision said he was picked up, and he said he was picked up, and he was rung into that cluster of these angels, and he counted from left to right. And he said, that one on the end, that seventh one, meant more to me than all the rest. And there he is right there, the seventh one. Mm -hmm. Well, who do you think the seventh one? Who, did the, who was the seventh angel? It's Brother Brown. There wasn't, a, there wasn't two seven. There was only one. He's the one that come. But now, he has been moved from the church ages over here into the bright age. And... And the Lamb has came and taken the book and everything is being revealed because it's the time for the revelation to come. And let's move on in this seventh seal. He said, oh, do you get it? And sitting in Sabino Canyon, the Heavenly Father knows this just as sure as it come to pass, those angels come right down and vindicated every message to be the same. Then you know whether it comes from God or not. It was foretold by vision. He said, I couldn't tell you until the service was over because I was forbidden. So now he's turned to the seventh seal. He can tell exactly what happened. He kept ask, asking during the seals. He said, you, are you catching it? Do you see what God's doing? Do, are you really catching it? And he thought, well, probably not. And they wasn't because... Look here, could you imagine sitting back there in 1963 and after this great tremendous vision and you sitting there and, and you're, you're, just, you're looking to be blasted off to heaven just any time. And here he starts bringing these messages and look here, if, if the people can't hardly understand them today, they surely couldn't hardly understand them back then because it comes through spiritual discernment. But look here, all that the Father has given me yes. will come. So yes. don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And that's the one thing about it. You don't have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to figure it out, you're no doubt going to figure it wrong mm -hmm. because it's not to be figured, it's to be revealed. So he said these angels come along and he said they actually told every message that was foretold by that vision. Now, let's go here to... Oh, Lord, just once more, they're in hot springs, and this is 1963. He said, now science took the picture of it. You see, it went on the Associated Press. They didn't know what it was. He said, there is a cloud hanging 26 miles high. So he's talking about this cloud picture right over here. He said, he said that's 15 or 20 miles above where the vapor is. They don't know what it is. It's all going about. And they're trying to investigate it. And there, right under it, I was standing 
and those seven angels roaring out their voices of those seven seals standing there. And the witness of three of us, because he said God does things by witness, he said, it was prophesied on tape, sir, is what time is it? Well, we, we read back there. And here now they're trying to find out it's a mystery to them. Well, it shouldn't be a mystery to us. We know. He, he just told us Revelations 10, 1 was Christ. Well, he said they took the picture of Revelations 10, 1. So it shouldn't be, but it is. And he said, the church knows it, science knows it, and everything has to testify when Jesus Christ makes a move. There it is, the magazine, if you want to look at it. And then he said, it's the one that's got Rockefeller and his new wife. Uh, and he said, I think it's the May issue of Life magazine. And you know, it was, I always thought that it was amazing that, that Life magazine had Rockefeller and his new wife. Amen. Well, that's because what, what did Christ do? He had to put away the old church. Amen. <laughs> why, why, why did he put her away? Spiritual fornication. So now he's got this bride that he's called a bride out of the Gentiles for his name and he has married her and given her his name. And when Brother Bram started to preach these seals, he said, I'm no longer going to call you a church. Hey. I'm going to call hey. you bride <laughs> because something had happened. Hey. Amen. So it's, it's amazing how, you know, how could all these things, well, God's in control. He's, he's omnipotent. He's the omnipotent God. That means he has unlimited power. If he needs to guide this person over there or that person, no problem. He'll work out everything to glorify himself. And that's exactly what happened. So when Jesus Christ makes a move, and that's what he did. He made a big move in this day because he come down himself to give us the word because it said the lamb was here. And people are, I guess they're expecting to see a lamb. Well, the lamb was a symbol of Christ. And Brother Brown said that that was Jesus Christ that come on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. There's not a half a dozen spirit. There's only one. And that's what was in him. Now, let's move on a little bit further here. We want to find out how the thunder sounded from the earth. Now, this is Desperations there in Jeffersonville, 1963. Seeing these signs coming, seeing the Holy Spirit take us out there and bring these seals and lay them in like that and bring the church ages and lay them in and then come down in a great big pillar of fire back there and he revealed himself. Well, what's he talking about? And now he's calling this the pillar of fire. Amen. Because it's Christ. I don't care if he's a pillar of fire, a pillar of cloud, a whirlwind, it's still Christ. However, he wants to manifest himself. And he said, and revealed himself, and then come down on the next thing on these seven seals and revealed it, and they even put it in the papers. Then come and take the angels of God, them seven angels with seven messages. Did you hear what he said? Seven angels with seven messages and confirmed it what the Bible said. Then during that time, come up and bring in those seals, those signs, flashes of the end time, and bring it to the people and tell them what it is and all about it. And the Lord working right there and showing himself present. Amen. Amen. Because he's the only one that could do Amen. these things. No man could do these things. Moses couldn't do what he'd done. What was it? He said it was Christ and Moses. So it's always Christ. We're always glorifying Christ because it's all about Amen. Christ. And if he uses some man, well, that's great. But the man, he can't do anything if Christ is Amen. not there. That's, right. that's just as simple as we know how to say it. And then he said, 
right on down like this morning, come up here and require the token to every person. Then he said, you're my people. You're the ones that I love. And then listening to the tapes. Well, that's what we're doing this morning. We're listening to the tapes. But it's not his voice. It's my voice. But I'm saying the same thing he said. So listen to the tapes and forth, so forth. Then you see what desperation it puts me. Amen. Anybody that takes and handles this word of God, you better get in desperation <laughs> because it's between life and death. Amen. Amen. That's right. Now, souls that are in prison now, and most people don't catch that. They think it's just a title to a message, and it is. But it's a title to a message that has a truth. Souls in prison now. Not going to be. now. And look here. If you're not in Christ, you're in prison. Amen. Because that's the only way you got out of prison was in Christ. He said the, all the law could do, the law couldn't save you. It just put it all. He said the law put you in jail. It couldn't get you out. Mm -hmm. But look here. Christ came and got us out. Now, he said, now what about you, church, about six or eight months ago here, standing here saying, it's thus saith the Lord. I'm going to Tucson, Arizona. There will be a blast and seven angels will appear. You remember? Now, not even. God making it so real until Luke Magazine took the pictures of it. Spiritual foresaw, materialized just the same. And the seven angels which brought for the winding up of all the scriptures cause all the mysteries of the entire Bible lays in the seven seals. All the mysteries of the entire Bible lays in the seven seals. He said, it's the mystery of the entire book laid in those seven seals that the Lord let us bring. So what was it? These seven angels which brought forth the winding up of all the scriptures. And who did they give it to? They gave it to the seventh angel. Because that was his position. That was his place. And what did he do? He gave it to us. And we received it. And what did we come? We become the word that we received. Because we received Christ. Not a piece of Christ. Not a part of Christ. We received the whole complete word of God. Christ. Amen. Amen. And during the church ages, they had a piece. They had a part. But it, they couldn't have it until this day when it was finished up. The bride body was complete. And boom, the head comes down and connects to the body. And the head was the word and the body was the word. So now it is a complete word of God finished. Now, listen to what he said here on this a little message called the absolute there. And you know, he never said this all in one place. And that's why you have to go, you have to go here a little, there a little. And hold fast to, to the, the part that you're speaking on. And that's what you have to do with the message. So, if you just... If you just hear one message and he makes one quote and then that's good but then you have to hear another message and you have to take that and connect that to that and then you hear another message and he says the same thing but he says it's just a little bit different and then you take that and you connect that and what are you doing you're bringing forth the picture mm -hmm. and he said if you've got a picture of the cow eating up here in the top of the tree he said your picture's wrong so we want to, our picture we want to see is Christ. Amen. So now let's use, look at this absolute here. Now it says, one day standing there, picking a couple of bird off or a little bullhead or off my leg, like it was, and there, there, that seven angels broke through the sky and shook the place till rocks weighing 50 or 60 pounds rolled down the hillside. And there stood seven angels standing there and commissioned me. So the angels, as he said, they stood there and commissioned me to go back and bring these messages. Now listen, and one by one, they would meet and tell me what happened. 
Not what's happening, what happened done where? Through the church ages. And so, where did he get the messages from? He got it from the angels. That's why the meeting was all about there in Tucson, uh, Arizona. And he said, and did exactly that way. When they ascended up on high, they went 30 miles high up in there on that same day. They took the picture of it. Science did. And it went around the world. It's a paradox. Well, we know what a paradox is. It's when God does something and it's just totally unbelievable. Yeah. And it was. And to most people, it still is yet today. They got the picture. And they don't even know what the picture is. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, my. So he says, and they took the picture of it, and this went around the world. It's a paradox, and it was an absolute that tied me tighter to Jesus Christ, winding up my life into him. I know it seems strange. It's always, yeah, it always is. Because God does things unusual. Amen. And people get in, he, Brother Bram said, he, they get in the regular old trend of things, and a stick of dynamite won't blow them out. <laughs> It takes a blast from heaven to shake them loose. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what that's what the seventh seal done. It shook us awake. That blast shook us awake. But that blast shook us awake. But that blast shook a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. They couldn't take it. They didn't know. Why, why did you mysterious thing about What's all about angels out there and having messages and all that? Well, it's just in the Bible. The Bible says so. <clears throat> now, let's look over here. Uh, in Shalom there in Sierra Vista there in 1964. Now he really just, just lays it out here. Just exactly like he showed us in the seven church ages what would come. Just exactly what he showed us what would come. And when he set that light up there in revelation to it to show the world when he sent seven angels, the light was the seven angels. When he sent seven angels to reveal the seven messengers that had been down through there, down through there where? The church ages. And show the loose ends. And each angel coming each day, mm -hmm. who revealed them? The angels revealed to Brother Brown. And then he called these angels. He said it was the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, what were they working by? It's all about the Holy Spirit. The angel wouldn't be no good if he didn't have the Holy Spirit. Yes, and that's what he said. He said there were seven angels. And these seven angels in there, he said there were seven spirits. Yeah, there was a spirit to each age, and it was a spirit of that age, and it was a spirit of Christ Amen. for that age. And some people, they see that and they say, oh my, seven spirits, yeah. Now, he said, now, and each, come, each angel coming each day revealing the loose ends that Luther left, and Wesley left, and Pentecost left, is all represented in there and at the very type and shadow of this great shalom jehovah j v h u c exactly throwed it in the skies and there the mechanical eye taking the picture of it see thank the lord shalom peace amen. don't be weary amen. jesus is here the great light and they're looking for a man they're, they're, you ask them, they're looking for a man of 2,000 years ago to drop out of the sky. And Brother Brown said, I'm not looking for nail scars and thorn friends. He said, I'm looking for the promised word because that was his commission to forerun the coming word, Amen. which is Christ. Amen. And he absolutely done that. So he said, Jesus is here. The great light has come to us. And we're so thankful for it. Yes, His Word, the great mystery. He is here today manifesting Himself, doing the same thing that He did then. Did not the, the ministry of Brother Brown, was it not a repeat? Blinded eyes, everything else cripples, I mean. We go back sometime and, and, and that's another thing. 
You know, some people, they talk about all that Jesus done. And that, well, I know he done that. And that was done for a witness to prove who he was. But look here, God didn't go out of business. <laughs> and they act like, well, you know, Brother Brown said, you can't get, you can't get warm by a painted fire. Yeah. He said, he said, that's history. Well, he's not history. He's present tense. And look here, but somebody has to believe that he's here. Somebody has to believe the word. Look here, when Jesus Christ, the God manifested in the flesh, when he went to these cities, he said he could do no mighty work because of their unbelief. Yeah. Well, if it, if it stopped him, it would stop him again today. Mm -hmm. Most people, because of that, they don't even try. They just stay quiet. Like we're a bunch of mutes that we don't have. He said, he give us the power and I don't find nowhere in the book where he took it back. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he said now, so here he is, they manifesting himself, doing the same as he did then, just the same, doing the very same. Amen, Brother Brown. Now, listen to what he says here in the rising of the sun there in Jeffersonville. He said, He is the one who opened those seals. He is those seals. For the whole word of God is Christ. Did you hear what he said? Christ is the seals that was opened because the whole word of God is Christ. He said, What was the opening of the seals then? Revealing Christ. Amen. And the very seven angels, which represented seven churches, all completed, and we couldn't even see it. Look here. It was all completed right here. And we could we looked at that. I don't see no angels up there. All I see is a, it's a cloud picture. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to preach a message one day my feeling led to about it's the same cloud. That's the same cloud. That's the same cloud that was with Moses. That's the same cloud. Amen. That's the I same cloud that. that picked Jesus over here I, in Acts 1 9. There's only that's, that's you go look in your concordance and see, go back to all these places he talks about this. It's the same cloud in 1 Thessalonians 4. It's in a cloud. It's the same one. It's the same cloud in Revelations 10 1. Mm -hmm. The same cloud. Not another one. And what is it? it? It's a representative. It's a symbol. It's a sign of Jesus Christ, the living God. Amen. So he's telling us who, who, who done all these things. For the whole word of God is Christ, and Christ is the seal that was opening. He said, and it was all completed, and we couldn't even see it. They did. They took the picture, not us. And there he is standing there, the supreme judge. And I heard a brother that he was talking about the judge. Well, you know, he come as that judge wearing that white wig. Yeah. But look at here. A message has two parts. Noah's message had two parts. Look here. If you believed it, <clears throat> you were saved. Right? If you rejected it, you were lost. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you come. When the message comes, if you believe it, you're saved. If you reject it, you're lost. That's just as simple as it. It gets, and it didn't change down here. If a message comes and we believe this, we're saved. If we reject it, where are you going to go? Where are you going to appeal to? You say, oh, I'll go to the white throne. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you get there, what are you going to say? Well, didn't you hear the message? And they're going to say, yeah. Well, why didn't you accept it? Amen. And there's no answer. So why? Depart from me. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. That's just how simple it is. So he said now, He's the supreme judge showing that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. What identification, quickening power mm -hmm. did that to us? Quickening power lets us see his coming. Amen. And they asked me, well, why do you say that? <laughs> because he said it. He said, quickening power lets me see. And then it goes on to say, he said, the seventh seal was the coming of the Lord. Nobody knew as he revealed it to us. Well, evidently, 
there's a lot of people that's not part of us. So he said that quickening power lets us see and see it's coming. Quickening power snatched us from death to life. Quickening power give us a new birth. What, who, who is quickening power? It's Christ. This is the Holy Spirit. It's Him working. And He said, quickening power gives us discernment to know what's wrong with you and what to do and what not, and what you have done and what you ought not have done and what you should have done, what you will. Quickening power, all these things. Amen. So the thunders have sounded from the earth, and now we know who's earth. We know where they come from. We know what it was all about. We know what it was sent for. It was all of those mysteries that couldn't be revealed through the church ages, which, if you believe what he said, has now been revealed. And look at here in the Laodicean church age, church age book, page 327. Now the messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelations 10, 7 so the messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelations 10, 7 is one. Mm -hmm. He was a prophet because that's what he said, I'll send you Elijah the prophet and come to the church age. He had to be a church age messenger. He said, and this messenger of Malachi 4 and Revelations 10 is going to do two things. One, according to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Two, he will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelations 10, which are the revelations that's contained in the seven seals. Did you hear what he said? The number two thing? He will reveal the mysteries of the seven thunders in Revelations 10, which are the revelations contained in the seven seals. It will be these divinely revealed mystery truths that literally turn the hearts of the children to the Pentecostal fathers exactly so. Now, I want to close with this right here. The thunders have sounded from the earth. And I know exactly where they, they sounded from. They sounded from the earth of Brother Ram. That was his earth because he had the voice. It was in his earth that he had the voice. He had the commission. He, he had the place. He had the spirit. He had, it was his time. Everything, and he done it. He said, I have, not, I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. Somebody said, well, he took something with him. No, he didn't. Whatever he took, it wasn't that we needed it. Right. Because everything we needed, that was his job. He gave it to us. And he gave us what? He gave us Christ, so we're not a piece nor our part. He gave us the whole complete thing. Now, listen. This here is in the breach between the church ages and the seals. This book is not revealed until the church ages and denominational ages has run out. So if you still got somebody in the church age and in the, look here, it can't even be revealed to her because he said it can't be. He said, this book is not revealed until the church ages and denominational ages has run out and there is time no more. That's Revelations 10, 6. Well, what's the time no more for? The time no more for the church ages. They passed. The messengers, the, the angels has come to give what was left off in there. And the seventh angel was here to give us the whole complete thing, not a piece. And now he said, but then he promises that. He said, when that time has finished out, what the time again, what time has finished out? The church ages. There will be a sounding of the seventh angel's voice and then the book will be revealed at that time. Look here, 1963. And we're down here in 2024. And people are still wondering. Well, you know, don't you say something in the Bible about wandering stars? 
They're, they're wandering, wandering off over here and wandering from one church to another and wandering about this and wandering about that. Look here. Quit wandering. Just believe Christ. Look here. We have access to the Word of God. Amen. We have access to the message. Nobody should be ignorant of the things that He said. I mean, this day, what a day we're living in. I remember back when I first came in around the message about 1980, my goodness, it was hard to get a tape. It was hard to get a book. It, I mean, you had to scrounge. You had to look. You had to dig. And, and, and when I got a book, I didn't give it away. I kept my yeah. books. And I still got them today. I've got some books in there that's 40 years old. And I don't know how old it was when I got them, but I still got them. And how hard. And now it is so easy. Yeah. I mean, you can have it on your phone. You can have it on your computer. You can you can go on the internet everywhere and just read, read, read in the people. Just, why? Because they don't care. That's as simple as it is. They do not care. They're not dedicated to Christ the Word. Okay, he said, you let so many things Amen. separate you. Mm -hmm. And we can name a whole list of them, but you don't have to. The people know what separates them from Christ. But look here. If Christ is not number one in your life, something is. Mm -hmm. Either your job, some people's car is number one. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they polish that thing and they shine it. And that old car one day is going to be a hunk of junk, a bunch of rust. And anything else that you put ahead of Christ, that's... That's your idol. That's what you're serving. But Christ has to be number one. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Well, why wouldn't you want to do that? That is so simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes, Christ. This thing, if, you're, if you take Christ, it ain't worth nothing. It's just a bunch of words. This here, when we're reading this message, we're reading the, reading the Bible. It's Christ. It's Christ the Word. But now, it's not on the page. This Word that we're talking about, it's a walking around. It's in me. It's in you. It's in the believers this day. Mm -hmm. Now, we are the body. Paul yeah. said it 2,000 years. He said, Know ye not ye are the body? Mm -hmm. I had a thought the other morning. And it said... Where is his body? Well, you know, 2,000 years ago, they come to the tomb, and it, it wasn't there. Yep. And they say, where, where, where's it at? Where, where have you laid him? I want, I want to see him. Well, that would be a surprise back then. But it's a surprise today when they don't know where he's at. They think he's over by yonder the Milky Way. <laughs> oh, behind the moon somewhere else. But he's not there. He's here. Because the prophet said that she, the bride, the wife, is him. The two are one. Mm -hmm. That's just as simple as it is. And if you are, you're going to live like Christ. You're going to do every word. It won't be a strain. It won't be a struggle. It'll be, amen, I'm ready to go. So that's what it's all about. So... The thunders have uttered from the earth. And now, John heard them, and, and he couldn't write them. But they were heard in this day, and they were spoke out. And we've heard them. Now, why John couldn't write, Brother Round spoke. How about that? Why John could not write, Brother Round spoke, and I... I heard them today. I've heard what the seven thunders uttered. And amen, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory because I know what it represents. It represents Christ, the full word that has come to, uh, well, praise the Lord. Amen. It was good, That's good. to be uh, in the house of the Lord today, to be able to read the scripture, be able to read the quotes and make them all fit together where they come together like they're supposed to, where there's not some kind of a confusion or this, that, the other. They come together smooth and seamless, just like God said they would. So it's a real privilege and a joy and so on to be in the presence of God, to know that He's not on a journey. He has come down. We're in the presence of Christ. He is living in us. Amen. And it's just, it's just when you think about it, 
that Christ is living in you. And when you go to work, He goes to work. And when you go to play, He goes to play. And when you go, He goes with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going all the way. So, praise the Lord. Let's stand together this morning and we'll close up with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you this day. Lord, it's a great day. It's a wonderful day because it's the Lord's day. Yes. He's come once again, Lord, to bring us glad tidings, Lord, to, to show us that we are the ones that He gave His body for. He gave His life, gave His blood. He bought us back. The devil thought He had us, but He come and He destroyed that death. He destroyed that prison house. He set us to the captive free. And Lord, so who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. We're so glad this morning, Lord, that not only did you come, you come again, Lord, just Amen. like you said you would. And you have set us free by revealing Jesus Christ to each and every one that's in this body, Lord. So we thank you. We love you. We praise you. We pray that you'll continue, Lord, to lead us, guide us, help us yes. reveal yourself more and more as we travel along, as we walk in the yes. light. We give you all the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.